Zero. Right. So, enzymes part two. Okay. Now, I have to talk to you about temperature, pH, and its effect on enzymes and how enzymes work. To do that first, I want to introduce a concept to you, which you know already. Okay. The concept is rates of reaction. And I need you to know that rate of reaction is just how fast a reaction happens. Okay? So I'll put there speed. Now, temperature and pH affect that when the reaction is controlled by an enzyme. Okay? So that's important. Temperature and pH affect the rate if an enzyme controls the reaction. Now, I just want to introduce a concept here, okay? Here is a reaction. Now, it's just a generic reaction, all right? I don't need anyone to say, what's that, what's A, what's B? Just accept it, all right? I want you to just take any reaction where chemical A or anything A joins with chemical B to make C, all right? We could call these two, what S word could we call these two from what we learnt last lesson? Substrate. Substrates, good. And this will make... Because of a P? Product. Products. So, these are our substrates and they make products. Now, keep concentrating. Okay? I need you to realise that the job of an enzyme is to lower the activation energy and it does so by bringing them together. So if I was to draw the enzyme here, and I need you to get this, oh my lord, this is a key concept, there is the enzyme, and what it does is it creates the active site for A and B, to come together to become C. Alright, that's what the enzyme does. Okay, so we'll have a little look again. The enzyme, the two active sites there are a specific shape that will fit the substrates and by bringing them together you get C. Now this brings me to another point, alright, and it's a chemistry thing and it's that concept called collision theory. For A and B to react, they have to do two things. One is collide. They have to actually hit each other. And that's where the enzyme helps because it brings them together. I should probably draw that a bit thinner. But I hope you get the concept. And not that they have to collide, they have to collide with enough energy. And when you get those two ingredients, a and B will become C. So, I'll say that again. When A and B collide, with enough energy, they make C, the product. Okay? Now, there's two very important graphs you have to know about and you have to be able to explain. Alright? So, how does temperature affect this concept here? How fast we turn A and B into C? Because that's what rate reaction is. And I need you to understand this graph. We'll call this 0, 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50 degrees C. And up here, and I'm just going to put R of R, we'll call this rate reaction, how fast it occurs. And the reaction goes like this. It gets faster as you increase the temperature until it reaches a point and then the enzymes stop or the reaction stops. Now, this is a massive concept and you need to understand why it gets faster at the start as you increase temperature but when you reach a certain point The reaction stops happening almost instantly. <coughs> now, this is because I need you to understand 
part one first. As you increase the temperature, what do you think happens to particles A, B and the enzyme that are sat there in that beaker or jar? What will happen to those particles? They react faster. They will something faster. Not quite reacting yet, but they will they'll move around faster. You're giving them more energy. Would you agree with that? Yes, you know, that Bunsen burner, whatever you put underneath, is giving the particles energy. They move around more. If they move around more, they will collide, collide more. And they will collide with more energy. And that is why the rate of reaction gets more. Because there'll be more collisions. There'll be more energy in those collisions, so you'll get more C. Do we get that? Okay, so part one, there will be more collisions because the particles have more energy, so you will make more products. Is that alright? Right. But there's this really, really important part you need to understand about the second part. And I'm going to try and make this a little bit better because it's a bit messy. As you knew from before, A and B will only fit into the active site if they are specific or complementary shapes. Now, I want you to imagine what happens if you're an enzyme and you start to get hot. Hello. As you get loads of energy inside you, your actual the energy of this enzyme starts getting really, really agitated. The enzyme starts moving around and all the bonds inside the enzyme start moving. And actually, if you put too much energy in there, we create... an enzyme that has lost its shape because you've put so much energy in it's actually broken the bonds in the enzyme if the enzyme has lost its shape what can't happen? that's wonderful the substrates can no longer bind to the active site and therefore we get no more product and our rate of reaction drops and this is called a very special posh word called when the enzyme changes shape like that it is what we call denatured so one more bit when the enzyme gets too much energy can you see where that is? About what temperature does that happen? 38. About 38. It gets too much energy. It actually denatures the enzyme. So we don't make any more product. product. Wonderful. All right? What did you say the enzyme looked like? <laughs> I just said it's denatured, which means it loses all its shape. All right? Do we all get that so far? Yes. All right, wonderful. Can I just put one last bit onto this? That temperature, right there, that the enzyme works fastest at, has a name. We call it the optimum temperature. And in most of our reactions, that is 37 degrees C, because that's what temperature you're bodies all right so two parts to the graph and the effect of temperature